Ah, that's on. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, if you guys are here, maybe can you give me a thumbs up? All right, at least half of you are here. Okay, I'm not so sure where the other half are. So, okay, uh, today we're going to uh, basically review about functions and uh, for loop. So, um, I just said something in the group chat in the zoom chat uh, the first is a Python is a link to a python notebook which is basically a re summary of uh, what we are going to learn today so um, for those of you who um, are lazy to set up your python or everything basically you just need to work from here um, basically here you just need to before we get started make sure that you are connected so you just press connect on the very top and then uh, it will take some time to connect and then uh, just wait for a few minutes just wait for i guess like 30 seconds and then when once it's connected there will be a tick here and it's good to go and you basically what you want to do is just run the first uh, box uh, yeah this book was not authored by google just run anyway Uh, so the first box is just basically trying to download turtle, but the turtle is slightly different from the turtle that you have. It's the turtle that's uh, used for Google Colab, but uh, rest assured, it's working just exactly the same way as the turtle in your computer. Okay, after it's successfully down installed, then uh, you can simply use the notebook lah. Okay, um, all right. And then another thing that we're going to use today is a code share. So today we will have also a live coding part where you guys will code uh, live. So there you can basically copy your code here to live uh, to share it with us lah, uh, live. And lastly, later we'll have another poll everywhere. Lah. So yeah, today I hope that you guys are just ready to participate at least. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically today there's some live coding, there's some uh, discussion, there will be a breakout room as well, so I hope that we can get done with it really early. Okay, uh, cool, 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 okay. Back to this, so yeah, as most of you who have learned, uh, this is a way you write a function where you have uh, the word def in the very beginning to like it's define, which is a keyword. And then you have the function name, and then you have the input or the argument. And then uh, the fun whatever under the function requires an indentation, and then basically there's an output. Okay. Okay, so um, um, okay, so say we want to draw, okay, yeah. Uh, Say you want to draw a triangle, okay? This is not your assignment, but say you want to draw a triangle. Uh, me, this is the way you draw a triangle, right? Like you do one forward, then a left rotate, forward, then a left rotate, forward, then a left rotate, and then a forward, and a left rotate, which you can save it as a function here, yes, yeah, draw triangle, All right? After you save the file and you can run it, you can call the function, right? Draw try. Or uh, you can directly put it into the file. But what if we wanna like change the length of the triangle, right? Should we like rewrite a new function? Like change the distance, 200 and then 100. Um, or perhaps like just write another one um, I think as you guys can guess by this point, right, you don't have to. In functions, you can actually capture common patterns and make it an input for the function, which is this way. Lah. Uh, define draw triangle, length, FD, length, yada, yada, yada. And then you can basically change the parameters, something like this. And capturing a common pattern is actually a very important skill. Lah. And uh, it's very an important skill in computational thinking, especially in 1010 and forward. Lah. 
because you guys need to capture patterns. Okay, so with that speaking, um, so we have we have this triangle, uh, draw triangle function already. I'll just run it. Now then, with that right, we can actually uh, use the reuse the function above to create the design below. This actually this design comes from your tutorial worksheet. So if you can see, we have uh, we start from the small triangle, which is uh, 100, 200, 300, and 400. You just press run, and basically yeah, it starts to create the triangle for you. Right. Now the question is how to do we create this triangle instead? This is the second triangle in your tutorial worksheet. If I should define it in this function over here. Um this is uh mm, um can anyone yeah uh, has anyone done this part? Uh, I can give you like two minutes to do this part. And then uh, once you are done, but, uh, you guys can copy your code to code share over here. Okay, uh, let's, let's see. Um, so there's this one. This one's... Uh, so um yeah let's try to see what this one does okay, okay uh, i'll just put it in here okay cool 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 All right, uh, okay, okay. So um, thanks, I'm not so sure who, uh, whose DD is, but basically if you can see, right, uh, what happened was that it, he draws the, he makes sure that uh, he rotates it at first, so like the direction is at the pointing at the right direction, and then he does, this one, this part over here basically draws the triangle. He draws the bottom part first, and then the top left, and then the top right, which is okay. But in a way, like perhaps, but um, in a way, like uh, when we do it functions, right? We do want to reuse the functions that we have created. So if it's possible, you, uh, we can use draw triangle again in our code. But this one is perfectly fine, lah. Um, let's try another code. So like this one is from Princeton. Um, not so sure what's. Uh, and that nested nested M triangle means the first the first picture you show the one where you have a lot of triangles bigger to small one in the same center. Okay, okay. So the, the, the first one you you show before this the picture you show. This one is it the top star top star is it? No 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 the one you show at first. This one? No no I mean the picture that. Oh, so there is it's, a it's, in our tutorial. Yeah, this one. Ah, uh, okay, okay. There's the huh? function to draw this. Ah, this one is not in the tutorial, man. God. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, not bad. Alright, thanks, thanks. But yeah, la, I think like just a little comment here is that um, it's not... I mean, it's strongly recommended to just create one function la, and reuse it multiple times instead of just like drawing several function, sim several similar function, but then, uh, yeah lah, basically that's my point. Uh, but yeah, uh, well done. At least like the way that you, uh, the fact that you can figure this out, it's actually pretty good already. Okay, um, next up we have from Ryan. Um, yeah lah, I think, uh, Ryan's code is uh, closest, I think, the uh, closest to what the 
answer key lah, where he actually also used the function uh, draw triangle again and repeats it three times. So I think I'll just copy it here. That's it. Say I want 50. Oops. All right. Okay, there are some functions that are not yeah, I think I need to copy some things. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is Ryan's code, and yeah, basically it just works uh, nicely, lah. So it's basically three lines. Basically, you what you want to do is draw the triangle three times using the draw try function. But then before that, you just rotate, lah. Same as uh, DD's code earlier. But however, I think um, I think I just want to give a little feedback, lah. Um, I think I mentioned it in the previous tutorial. Uh, when you try to import Turtle, right, please don't import it this way. Uh. Uh, please don't import it this way for CS 1010E, just for CS 1010E. Uh, what you want to do is just like, what you want to do is just uh, from import, uh, from Turtle import star. Then once you do this, right, instead of the line 66 over here, then you don't need to include the here the package name turtle in the beginning like you can immediately remove it like this it's gonna be okay hence like for this one right you don't need to have 3.fda anymore i hope that clears things lah because i think uh, if you code it this way right it's not gonna work in cosmology i think okay uh is that okay with you ryan which ryan i'm not so sure which one right okay Okay, cool. So I think uh, we'll move on. So um, good job, everyone. So as you can actually see in the worksheet, there's actually two other designs. And this one, uh, let me see. Uh, this one, right? Uh, yeah. Um, the, this is your task, like, basically you need to draw these for with uh, for loop. Like. Uh, it's already prepared in your worksheet, so you just basically code. You can do it in your own ideally, or you can do it here as well. So yeah, you just put your code below here. Uh, this one, the prof gives 10 minutes, like, so assume 5 minutes for each, each picture. But in my experience, for in the past last two semesters, right, uh, most of you will not be able to finish in 10 minutes, even one picture. So like, I think, yeah, like, just try your best. I'll give you 10 minutes. So by 10.30, try to uh, come up with this picture. If you're done, just share it and code share. Like, uh, thanks, Hadi, for sharing. Now I'll just like create a... Uh, no. I'll just create a huge comment. All right. Um, I hope most of you are done. Uh, for those of you who have copied your code to code share, I really thank you guys. For those of you who aren't done, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Uh, we can go through this together. Okay, so let's start to discuss. Okay, so actually, if you can see, right, if you can see the triangle over here, if it's actually a very familiar triangle. Um, all right, okay. It's actually the triangle earlier la, where we is a earlier toxic triangle here. It's just that here in this case, it's we try to merge the first and second triangle into one where in the first triangle, we have basically have a small triangle and create it bigger. And in this case, we have a toxic triangle and we make it bigger every time. Right. So I think seeing your code, I think some of you got it. Like some of you basically just repeats uh, basically uses the function that you 
basically some of you, you use the function that to create the small triangle here but then basically you allow a new input which is the length and then basically create a for loop to keep on increasing the length okay so um okay seeing the code here right uh, mm -hmm. okay so I think what we see from Vincent here is basically the simplest one. Basically, it does repeat three times. Uh, I'm not so sure whether it works or not, but okay. no, that's not. That's uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Mm. Uh, I think you need to copy the function of both. Yeah, yeah. I use Let's see. Let us see. So, I need to copy from draw three learn x right. Uh, this one right. Yeah, okay. No, oh, there's no dependencies. Uh, are you sure? Cause like it needs a direction here. Bit different direction is only for anti clockwise or clockwise, uh, just because so that easier for me to rotate. True is it will go anti clockwise. Let's see, uh, true is it will go clockwise. Gosh. I... Oh, so the below, sorry, the code below I forgot to input because I just added the. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then I need to later, yes, later. Yes. I, I, I need to check later. Like. There's a lot to check here. Okay, um, is there any other code? Um, say, okay, Ryan, let's draw triangles. Uh, hi, Ryan. Uh, which one is the code for the toxic triangle over here? Um, Um, it's uh, a toxic triangle. The f I name it as figure three. Oh, as in it's below. Oh, right, right. Uh, my yeah. bad. Okay. Let's see. Oh, but I think I named draw triangle a bit different. Change it for you. It is not defined. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, okay. Three I is too small. Input. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to make it like uh, 50. That's the triangle. Um, I use I use the different figure. I all use right. Figure. Oh my god, that's actually a, a creative way as well. All right, so that's one way to do it. All right. Thanks, Ryan. I didn't think of that as well. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um. Any other code that we can try? Um, I mean, it's it's good like, that you also use the for loop here. Although it, uh, yeah lah. Um, it will, I hope that you can use the reuse the function that you made earlier lah, on fig one and fig two. Uh, Hars, okay. Uh, okay, I'm not so sure who Hars is. Hars, uh, which one is your code? Which one is the code for the toxic triangle? Uh, it's the triple triangle. Triple. Uh, uh, the comment is for triple toxic triangle. Harry. This one, ah? Uh? Yeah. Let's see. 
uh, it stops. Uh, not not every not everything. Uh, it stops at the rotate one twenty. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a huge ass triangle. Okay, so basically, most of you did it that way, lah. Where you guys um. Uh, do each triangle one by one instead of doing from the smallest triangle to the bigger triangle. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, okay. So what's that? What are you drawing there? Yeah, that, that's not my code. Oh, okay. Must something must have happened. But anyways, it's cool design. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the next design, which is this one. Um, again, as I mentioned this one, right, um, actually this one is very similar from the earlier one. So you start with the small triangle, uh, small triangles first actually, and then, and then you go for the bigger ones, but before you go to the next one, you rotate it a bit so that you can I'll use another pen color. So you guys can draw it. Okay, sorry, my, my drawing is bad. And then after that, you draw the biggest one. Uh, okay, that's a very ugly drawing, but let, let me redo, let me redo. This is terrible. So you start off with the small ones, and then you go off for the medium one, but before you go off to the medium one, you would want to rotate. And then finally you go to the, you do another rotation again and then you do the very big one. This is generally how you want to do it. So, thing, not so sure if anyone, I'm not so sure, like the way you guys gave your, your function names, I'm quite confused. But for that one, right, um, what we can do is that we can recycle from, uh, I think this was Ryan's code earlier, fig two's code. But, And then basically from there you can do like a def <coughs> it's basically like a line in range uh, 100 to 400 then uh, you can like uh, config to config to i and then you can do a rotate L left rotate of oh my, 60 degrees if I'm not mistaken yeah. oh my bad uh and I call the function. I hope this works. Yeah, so basically like that. Uh, basically, it's, it's basically like the first triangle, but for the middle part, right, you just want to shift it a bit. All right, that's all. Um, okay, uh, that's all for uh, third dose. I hope that clears all the questions. So I hope by now you guys can do assignment two. Is everyone cool with this? Uh, if you guys are cool with it, can you give a thumbs up? I mean, this is just practice uh, for you guys to practice for loops. If you guys are okay, give me a thumbs up. If not, uh, please just drop your comments in the chat as we can move on to the next part. Okay, all right, cool. I think now the next part is, uh, we're gonna do a little detour. I think this is something that the prof has been very, uh, something that the prof has been quite excited to talk about is basically the difference between a print statement and a return statement. 
So in this case, you, I think you guys can see like, the difference. Like here in the print statement, say, I mean, I run a function, this one, right? I run the square function over here that returns me x times x, the square of a number, which gives me nine. Basically, when you do the calculations alone, right? Uh, basically, nothing will show up. There's no output. But then when you print it, print the output, print the variable where it's assigned, right? There will be a result. Unlike if you just use print statement, right? It's just like prints. It echoes the state. It echoes whatever it asks to be printed, but it does not return any value. Hence, for example, in this case, right? When I uh, call this function, say three times, when I store it to Z, right? Uh, Z will be empty over here. It's, it's going to be none. So that uh, when, uh, how to say, uh, when you want to do a calculation with your function and you want it to actually, if you want to use the value of the calculation, make sure that you use the return statement instead of the print. Okay. Aside from the assignment to where it, assignment to check H, right? It will, uh, the, a cosmology will ask you to return the value of a function because cosmology will rely on the return value to assess your answer. So make sure that in the future, in future assignments, right, aside from check H, use the return statement instead of print. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I think, where is it? I think that's for just the difference between uh, return statement and print statement. Mm, so if you can see here, for example, in this one, right, uh, a print statement just like echoes the return value. And then like uh, some will not echo because there's no return value. Yeah. See, like if you just do a print, right, it's just gonna print that I, uh, that, that's not important. Lah. So, um, okay, I think my explanation was not clear, but it's like the only best way to actually understand about like with the difference between return or print is actually for you to try it yourself. Lah. That's why we have this Google Colab environment for you guys to try it yourself to see the difference. Um, any questions regarding uh, the difference between print and return? It can be quite confusing. Feel free to unmute yourself or drop a chat. Yeah. If there's no question, maybe just give a thumbs up between the difference between return statement and print statement. Okay, I, I don't see a lot. So I, I, it's, I think you, some of you are a bit confused maybe. Um, yeah, just try to run the code here and then you can see the difference basically. Okay, if you are not, if you are scared to ask questions, then it's okay, just ask at the end. Lah. Okay, next we'll do selection statements. Uh, is it in the tutorial? So yeah, this, in the tutorial there are like uh, this two, but like let's just do a po simple poll EV lah, and see if you guys can figure it out. No worries. Uh, th this time, unlike the previous slide, time, there's plenty of time. So we'll just try. Um, you guys can go to uh, polyv.com slash Mathias Aaron 417. For your convenience, I'll type it out here. This one is just a very simple exercise. Just four questions for this part. If you guys uh, have, uh, if you guys have uh, logged in to Poe EV, no need to log in actually, sorry, don't need to log in. Just like if you have opened it, uh, just give me a thumbs up uh, so I can figure it, uh, can have a rough idea like who's done and who's not. If you guys have a uh, open poll, if you just give me a thumbs up. All right. Uh, okay. 
Go, go, go. All right, I think most of you have opened Polyvi, so let's just start. Okay. Okay, so uh, selection statements. So, so what will this uh, function return? Uh, there's 30 seconds. Uh. So this is our first trial. So this is an EFL statement. What will this function return? Okay, five, four, six, three seconds. All right, time's up. Okay. Uh, okay, time's up. Now let's see the answer. And all right, uh, half of you said two, uh, some of you say error, and the rest, as someone said none, the correct answer is two. So if we see here, right, um, so if I call full, right, I call, eh, why is my pen not working? Ah, uh, okay, lah, it's okay. Oh shit, why is my pen not working? Yeah. Good point, good point. Um, good point. Um, that's my bad, my bad chat. Okay. Uh, but I think like the point here that I want to raise is basically uh, um, is that um, we'll run this code over here first if true, right? Because it's true, then basically everything below it is run. If that makes sense. So then if this is true, it's correct, then we'll run the code over here. Then we go line by line. If false, because it's evaluates as false, right? Then this part is skipped and it will run over here else and then it will print whatever here, lah, which results in the answer to. A uh, good point, Chanson, that uh, print is not returned and my bad. I think this is the only time that I will make this mistake, hopefully. But I think it's, you have a very good eye and make sure that um, you, are, you keep that eye to your finals because I think the, the questions can be quite tricky as well. Is everyone clear on this one part? Why is it two and not error? Because like uh, there are still like 20% of you that answered that answered error. It means that you didn't think like Shansen where it's not a written statement and you didn't think like the rest where it's two. Does everyone understand that the, why this code gives you a two? Okay, cool. I assume you guys understand. Okay, moving on. Okay, the next one, 30 seconds. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, leaderboard is not important at this point. Okay, you 30 seconds are, what will this return? Yeah, full, if false, if true, return one, else return two. Now this one should be correct. Okay, can you explain the true false part? Okay, I'll explain this one also. I'll explain using this case. Five seconds. All right, time's up. So we'll see the answer. Okay. All right, the answer is two. Okay, I'm not so, okay. 12% uh, answers one, 12% answer none, but a majority of you answer two. Well done. So I think uh, ex explaining what happened here, right? Um, again, we have, uh, again, we have a uh, function here. So basically we run every code here. Because this is an if else statement, right? We will evaluate the truth value in each if in each condition. So first we evaluate the, the one at the very top, if false. Now, if, if this 
line over here is true, right? If this line over here is true, then we will run this code and basically skip else. But uh, in this case, uh, it evaluates as false, this part over here. Because it evaluates as false, then we do not evaluate anything under it. We do not evaluate anything under it, and basically this line gets skipped. We, then we move on to the next line. We, we still need to look for the next line that's just true. Oops, let me go. But because there's no other if else statement, uh, if else if statements, right? Then we immediately jump to else. And because it's else, right? Regardless, of, there's no true value, hence we will run everything that's here. Lah. Hence it will give you. Uh, return to. Is there any default value? Like, is it by default true? If I don't don't have anything, because there's no variable. So else is it? There, there's no parameter that you don't say if something is true. You just say if false or if true, right? Oh, this so, one is so just. Is it by default? By default, assuming we assume it's true. Oh, no, no. Um, if you. What if no, actually, I change? No. So if what you... if? What if, if I you just like if you just like do like yeah. if dot dot right and then this is empty right it will return an error. Oh. So so what if I change in this code right I change the position of false and true will it still return to? Um. So you mean if like I change I change false and true. Oh okay okay so I saw uh, them. So, so like if, if true if false. If true if false, if false yeah. Then return was... one, then else uh, return two. Yeah. Then we can debug law. So in this case, um, I use a different color. Because this is true, right? Then we'll run this part, the code over here, and then it will skip this part. Because technically, it's, uh, in this case, uh, the, um, so the statement selection right, already found a statement where it's true. Hence, next it will evaluate the code over here. If false, right? Because it's false, it will not run the code over here. So it will be none now. Correct. It will none. It, it will produce none. Also, that, that means by default, it will become true. Right? So that means by default, the machine takes it as true. Right? Like when they interpret. So if, if false, it will skip the whole thing. Right? Yeah. If false, it will skip the whole thing and skip, uh, jump to. It will not like skip the whole thing lah. Like if there's another else if statement, it will go to the next else if statement. Um, I'll show you with another example lah. I'll show you with another example in the next part. Okay, so leaderboard, yada yada yada. I think this example should uh explains better. Okay, thirty seconds. So if you can see here, right, we have a function foo where it has like uh, five different conditions, five different conditionals. No, actually there's only four. There's only four conditionals and basically uh, it's an else. And the, the rest is an else. So it means that when, I've, when everything else fails, it will jump into else. All right, time's up. So I think we'll check the answer. Okay, the answer is uh, number three. Uh, so eighty-two percent of you got it right. There's no error, again. So if we check here, right? Um, uh, if we trace this code over here, right? Um, the first statement is false, so we will not run this part. Okay, I'll use red. The second statement is false again, we'll not run this part. And then the third statement is true. Because the third condition is true, right? We'll take this part and basically skips whatever is below. That's how it works. So in this case, right, if in the scenario where this is false, and then this is false again, like when everything is false, right? When every condition is false, then you will eventually run the else statement, which is like, when everything else fails, run this. That's why it's very important if, it's very, uh, this part over here, right? The statement over here is actually pretty important. 
because if I write it this way, if so if lf lf then if else then this will not be one conditional statement uh, condition like one block of code but instead it's actually two blocks this is the first one this is the second one so in this case it will run this part first it will run this part which will give me this part over here and then it will run this and give me this so it will give me like three and four Technically, it's impossible because it's a written statement, but I mean, you get what I mean, right? Like basically, if I have two if statement, this becomes two if statements because the keyword if over here, right, indicates that it is the beginning of uh, an if else condition, if else block. Is everyone clear on this? Uh, Bingsen, is, uh, does it help you? Yes, thank you. All right. So I guess the last part. I think the last question is, uh, I think something that Pinkson actually touched. Uh, yeah, the last part, it should be easy. Five seconds. All right. As uh, being said, uh, as we discussed er earlier, it should give written. It, it should. Oh, actually, oh. Okay, I, I must have pressed the wrong answer. It should have given you a none. Sorry, it should have given you none. This is wrong. Oh my god. Should have given you none. Um. So I think as most of you figured. Um. Uh, basically, we have uh, this one will evaluate to false. So because it evaluates to false, nothing happens here. And then because there's nothing else but it below, it will return none. Um, so if it's like if the loop starts with if false, then the whole section won't run. Correct. It's not loop, okay? It's conditionals. I mean, it's similar like while loop. Lah. So if it's while false, then nothing will uh, nothing will be ever run here. Okay, uh, my bad. So I guess the scores are pretty tainted here. I need to change it. But yeah, the answer is none. So I mean, since no one answered to error, so like the score should be okay. So okay, good job, guys. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. It's just uh, interesting exercise. So I guess uh, the last question is like, uh, can you spot the difference? Okay, this is annoying. This one is actually the your tutorial question. So what is the difference between the two functions? So just fill in the answer. Indentation, did indentation, else under another place. Our statement within if true, outside if true, else is spread with different if. Yeah, I think. I think it's good. I think I like this answer. Else is spread with a, with a different if. I think I really like the answer. Uh, yeah, uh, results full will print two and class will not print anything. That's a good point. All right. Uh, I like that you guys can come up with these answers uh, so that we, so you guys actually understand what's going on. So yeah, you should be able to trace the if statements by yourself. Lah. So in this case, like this one is one block on its own. This one is one block on its own. Another block.
Yeah, I think if I should put a box, it will look like that. Good job. Uh, it means you guys already understand. So I think just a little uh, shout out. Uh, indentation is very important in Python, so make sure that your indentations are correct. I know someone did not do, I think someone, I forgot whether it's from this class or not. Someone came to me and it's not about if else, it wasn't for a loop, but it was just about writing functions and the, his indentation was not proper. La. That's why his code didn't run properly. So yeah, uh, good job. Um, all your answers are correct. So I think I'll just check what's next. Oh, okay. So, okay. Now let's move on to the next part. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let's get to the real code. Let's get some, get to some real coding. Okay. Um, this one, uh, the question is has also been. This one is also. This one is the last part of your tutorial. Uh, basically, I uh, will do this part later, part three at the end of the tutorials, because the other one is pretty easy. We'll do this first. So, um, yeah, um, this one I have also included it in the notebook, so you guys can just go to the bottom part and do it. Lah. So, today we're going to discuss about burgers. Uh, what's going on? Uh, uh, okay. Okay, uh, I'll add you after this. Uh. Okay, so uh, let's get to, to some real coding. Uh, so if you can, if you know right in McDonald's, you can do some food customization, meaning you can micromanage what will be on, uh, what will be on your burger or not on your burger. Okay, like this. Someone ordered no onions, no ketchup, no mustard, no pickles, no bun, no meat patty. I actually did this once in uh, McDonald's Vivo CT. But one thing that I always do when I order burgers, right, is that I will always request no pickles. I really, really hate pickles. And perhaps sometimes I'll add for more onions. Okay. So uh, in our imaginary restaurant, right, we can actually do some burger customization where uh, every ingredient is represented by, uh, uh, every ingredient is represented by uh, letter, where B is stands for piece of bun, C is cheese, P is for patty, yada yada yada. And then every burger is represented by a string, B, F, P, B is a simple burger, a double cheeseburger is a B, F, C, P, C, B. A Big Mac would be, you know, if you can see here, there's, there's a bun, oh, what about it? A bun, patty, veggie, bun, Patty, veggie, cheese, but let's see if that's correct. Oops. Yep. So that would be a bun, patty, veggie, burger. A bun, patty, veggie, cheese, burger. A bun. My bad. So yeah, this is the price. Yeah, I guess a la carte is a bit more expensive. So this is the price. So if we order like a burger, veggies, patty burger, it will cost me three point two dollars. Okay. I think it's from here it's clear. You just need to sum everything up. So now, uh, what I need you guys to do, which is uh, the, what the prof asked, is uh, you need to discuss with your neighbor on how to start or do it. So. Uh, given my function over here, burger price and the string of burgers, how do I come up with the, how do I come up with the price given a string? So now what, what's going to happen is that I'm going to break you into breakout gr groups. I know, I know some of you may dread breakout groups. Um, okay. Hi guys. So for those of you who, are, who just uh, got back, uh, can you y'all fill up the answer, like how would you calculate the price of the burger? Just like a brief explanation, like one to two sentences. It doesn't have to be the code. You just want to like uh, have a rough, like a pseudo code. Lah. How would you do it? Where are 
are not there. Why aren't they back here? Well, I was thinking. Where's the rest? Uh? I thought I closed the breakout room already. You find price to each integer sum. All right, everyone is back. Okay, so um, from your discussion, feel free to answer the question. You don't have to write the code. You just need to write, explain like, how would you do it step by step? Any other answers? Like there's 26 of you, I believe there were 10 breakout rooms and there's only like three answers here. Oh, okay. Assign a value to each code, okay. I create a tool list with prices and characters. Then slice the string and map it to the corresponding price at the same index in the second list. Good, good, good. Oh, someone's being advanced. Here's a dictionary to run through each character of a string and total up the amount of each character. I think that's for the next two tutorials, I think. We're not there yet, but wow, well done. Any other answers? All right, I think I need to close it here. I mean, for those of you who have answered, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I think I really like this one. I mean, this one is very uh, intuitive. Oh, sorry. Oops. I mean, this one kind of encapsulates of everyone's answers. Lah. Like, basically what you want to do is use a for loop to dissect the string, then match every letter to the price by an if-else statement. I mean, you, we use if-else statement because this is something that we just learn, lah. like something that we learn. But I think someone who mentioned about dictionary, it's okay, that's correct you can keep a dictionary of the prices of the burgers. Okay. Mm. Not so sure. Not so sure how like the first works. Cause like, okay. I think can, uh, can, can. Number one is also can. So like basically you just like, the, I think the top one, I think if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but whoever wrote this, if, my understanding is that you go from a uh, ingredient one by one, right? Like you do B first, like, okay, there's how many B's are there in the burger? Then how many C are there in the burger? How many P are there in the burger? Then like basically you multiply it with the price, which is actually a good way of thinking as well. So um, I think what this uh, exercise tries to what this exercise tries to teach us is how do we actually uh, break down our problems into smaller sub-problems? How do we devise steps? Because I think for some of you, maybe like coming up with all these solutions may seem easy, but some of you, the solutions may not seem that straightforward. I myself uh, didn't realize this until, yeah, like, until some months after taking this mod. That sometimes like, Coming up with an answer is not as easy as it seems. Some, it's just some, for some people, it's just not natural to just like come up with stuff. So that's why this exercise is for you guys to learn. Like, given a problem, how do you actually break down it into smaller steps? So yeah, this is one way of doing it. You'll receive a string into your function, right? Then you go through each character of the string one by one. Then you accumulate the price for that character. And then you output the final price. It's like, you know, 
It's like using the self-checkout cashier in FairPrice where you scan the item one by one and then the machine will add up your item. So then, uh, if you see, right, visualize is there. Okay. So then basically, uh, when you go through each character, right, you'll need to accumulate. Then if you can see, right, that it means that there's going to be a for loop. Lah. That's because you need to accumulate, right? You need a place to actually store all your prices. It means you need a variable, lah, or basically you need uh, to set the final price to be zero. Basically, this is a variable that stores your accumulation. You can imagine it somewhat like a basket or a bowl where you just keep putting things into it. And then um, you, basic, you, you need to start with zero. Lah. Then basically you output the final price. So that's the way you actually like come up with like a step-by-step -step solution to a problem. Now it's a good time to start your IDLE and code together. Okay. So I think uh so we have this code over here, right? Let me just like uh basically uh we have here, like, first what we want to do is, like, we create the for loop first, a working for loop. So, to, to know that it's working, right, you want, what you want to do is perhaps, like, do a print. So, um, going here, let's try something. So, um, say, let me create my test case first, like, uh, burger fries. BPB and then what I want to do is perhaps like the first I want to check the length because I want to do an L why do I need to check the length because I want to do a for loop for item yeah, for index in range length I, I need the length because i want to make sure that when i do my for loop right my uh my index does not exceed the length of my burger and then i do my after i do my for loop then i do my print print burger i index so if you see the code here right what it does is that it actually oops What it does is that it actually loops over. It it check it it we have made we have made the loop over here that it actually can loop over one by one B P and B. Okay. See. Um. But yeah, as you know that this is not the final code. I mean, like we have successfully making the iteration, but we haven't uh actually calculated the price yet. So next is that we want to actually uh, get the price of each item. Lah. How do we get the price of each item? Actually, as someone has mentioned in poll everywhere right here, um, basically you create an if else statement. Someone actually wrote it here as well. So I think this one is the crazy part lah, where you kind of need to write an if else statement, a very long if else statement. If dex is equals to what uh, B, and like the price is uh, then uh, print uh, 0 0.5 and lift I think uh, for clarity I'll just put it here in the top it doesn't change anything it's just that I'm assigning it here so this one is shorter if is item is okay um okay um Nic nicholas say that uh, why can't you just use i in burger since burger is a string input and the answer is you can actually it's just that we haven't touched it yet actually we are touching it in like 10 seconds uh. okay 
So, okay, for those of you who doesn't know, basically you can actually look through a string. Lah. So in this case, uh, what I do, this is something that we teach in the previous tutorial, right? Where you can do burger and then if you take a bracket and then a number inside, then it will take one character. And then you can actually look through a uh, the string itself immediately. So, so we can actually modify this immediately into burger. Oops. Uh, rename this for clarity. So if you guys want, for those of you who doesn't know what's the output here, uh, I'll do it. So for item in burger, print item. So it will actually iterate through each character in the burger. So for those of you who doesn't know, now you know. Okay. Thanks, Nicholas, for bringing it up. So then, like, from then you can actually create a for loop, an if else statement. Yeah, checking the price. If item is a B, then uh, basically print uh, 0 0.5. And if item is uh, C, Uh, print uh, 0 0.8. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bad type uh, typer, so I do a lot of typo. L if uh, item is uh, P, uh, print, uh, okay, I think this one is enough for our example here. Yeah, so in this case, uh, inside it prints the prices, as you can see. Then because it prints the prices, now we have successfully printed the prices, right? But this is not what we want. We don't want the price of individual items. What we want is um, the total price of everything. So then basically what you need is some sort of uh, variable to store it, to just like add everything up. So basically we create a variable here, uh, cost, like any, any like cost, cost works well, price works well. Just pick a variable name that's well, that is explanatory. Then here, if the item is P, what you want to do is cost is equals to the current cost, which is zero plus 0 0.5. Okay, so basically cost equals to the current cost added by the new items, which cost 0 0.5. Another cool way of writing it is simply by typing cost plus equals to, what's, what's the price of C? 0 0.8. This is also another way of writing it. Cost plus plus equal to 1.5. So if for those of you who are curious, this is an assignment uh, operator as well, where in this case, it will simply add whatever is here on this side to this, to the variable. Okay, so if you are curious, right, is it, is it only applicable to pl uh, plus? No, you can also actually Use it for minus, multiplication, division, or even floor division. But in this case, what we want is a plus. Then after that, after the cost is calculated, what you want to do is just like return the total cost, which gives us 2.5. Another sample is BVPP. Oops, uh, I don't have V yet, so I'll create V. which the cost is 0 0.7, much better, all right? So yeah, um, yeah, the final code should look more or less like this. Uh, yeah. So um, are we done? Um, I mean, I guess this is the question that we always ask ourselves when we code, right? Are we actually done? Um, we, when we do coding, right, we always should always think, right, can we do it in another way? Or is there another better way? So in lecture, we learned about this. Uh, for example, what we did earlier, right, uh, what Nicholas raised is that we improve the way we do sequence, lah, right? We improve the way we write sequences instead of this, like, we can actually write it in this way. That's one way that we learn to improve. Um, another improvement that you guys, that someone suggested through pull everywhere is to actually use a dictionary, but we haven't touched it yet. 
And using a dictionary is incredibly powerful for this example, which we will touch in the upcoming weeks. So I do hope that um, when you, whenever you're coding, right, whether it's for 1010E or not, always have the mindset to always keep on improving. Okay. Um, okay. Lastly, uh, I think uh, finally we have we, we have made our own code, which is this, this calculus surprise. Of course, you can always uh, extend the if else statement to follow this particular table over here. Even you can add your own ingredients, but that's for you to uh, practice. Lah. Okay. Now, uh, now, the learning points for today is that not only about how you get the final code, but you also need to be able to plan and write your code in English first. You may need to write some intermediate code for a semi-finished product to test out your idea. After you finally get your code working, you should think about how to improve it. Not only for that single shot, but you are improving your coding skills for your future coding. I know I'm reading from the slides, but it's so true. <laughs> Because like, I think when you go for like uh, 2K uh, for your, say in my CS 2K mod, right? CS 2030 or 2040, like it's impossible to write the entire code in my pa on paper in my finals. So what we need to do is we actually need to learn how to code in English as well. So we kind of need to explain like how our logical steps work in English. Because I think it's very important that you can actually write your code in English because if you cannot, then I believe your code should be very, very messy and it's basically a spaghetti code. Lah. Is everyone clear on this? I, I think this one is still pretty easy. I think. Right. So, uh, that brings us to the last exercise. This one is done, right? Okay, I think one thing that I want to mention is that please keep your keep your answers to burger to the burger solution because we'll be seeing more burger questions in the future. Then lastly is this part. Um, we mentioned about three types of loops and repetitions in the lecture. Uh, we'll just go through them really fast. It's a very easy one. So there are three types of loops. Um, as mentioned, there are, the number one is the one that must run exactly n times, definite. Second is like must run any number of times or indefinitely. And lastly is run at most n times, uh, meaning that um, it's a definite loop that may break. Okay, so I think uh, let's go through some examples. First is uh, this example for A and C. It means that you know the number of n for A and C, it means that you know the number n when your loop starts. So for example, is that like count the number of odd numbers from 1 to 100. Like you kind of know like how many times you need to loop, like around 100 times. Um, iteration version or uh, iteration version of computing the factor n is also uh, n times definite because like you technically knows how many times to run it. So for example, a 5 factorial means like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right. Uh, you can then, you know that you need to multiply 5 times then you know that it must run exactly n times. Another example is that given a string a, b, c, d, e, f, you need to compute its length. Now this one is a bit tricky. This one is actually, um, this one is C, because if you think about it, right? Remember our earlier code for the burger, right? Where we do like for uh, item in burger. It is the same case with this one, where we know that it's definite. There's a definite numbers. Like we know that the, it, the string cannot be infinite, but then, you know for sure that the string is going to stop somewhere. Hence, it's uh, run at most n times. Uh. Another example will be uh, check if a string contains any vowel. This one is uh, similar. Uh, similar with the previous one. Uh, basically, oh sorry, my bad. Basically, uh, you know the length of the string and basically you need to loop through as much uh, as the number of 
characters inside the string. So it will run at most n times and will break at a certain point. And check if a number is prime is a little bit tricky. Lah. This one can be somewhat indefinite. It, no, actually, no. Check if a number is prime is also run at most n times. Because you technically need to check whether the number is divisible or not by all the primes before it. Lah. So say given like uh, 7, then you need to try dividing it by 2, 3, and 5, whether it's divisible or not. So if you can see, right, a lot of uh, examples, right, a lot of the examples are mostly A and C. It's quite rare to actually face uh, an example in B. Um, because of that, uh, for A, right, um, most likely it's going to be a for loop. For C, it is also most likely to be, it can be, it's easier to code in while, but you can do it in for loop. And I'm just going to tell this to every one of you here. Lah. Um, personally, I prefer a for loop because a for loop is cleaner. It's easier to read and it is a safer way to code because if it's a for loop, right, uh, there, is a, there is a fixed number on when it will end, lah, when the loop will end. It will not just keep on running over and over again. So for those of you who are coding, right, I strongly suggest, right, if you can write it as a for loop, please write it as a for loop instead of a while loop. I know I saw some of your answers, right? You guys prefer to use while loop instead of a for loop. So I think it's something that you guys can change. Lah. So I think for a, very, for a very final exercise, before we close, I think it's very simple. Um, can you think of an example for, of each type? Uh, uh, an example where you need to run exactly, must run exactly n times, run any number of times, or run at most n times. Uh, I'll open for EV now. Uh, this one does not have to be, uh, this one, right, it does not have to be a uh, Python example. It can be in real life. Lah. Like, what is something in real life that must run exactly n times? Maybe you guys want to give an example. Oh no, actually run is, life is not exactly n times there. Like, I think life is more on the indefinite part because technically um, you do not know until when you live. Oh my god, it gets philosophical. It can get to 70 or it can get to 80. But then you don't know when you end. Actually, that one is the one of those examples where it actually that one is something that you use a while loop lah, for life. So if, say, uh, you are sick and you die, then the illustration ends. All right, and just needs clear one to 120 MCs to graduate. OK, uh, by the way, this one, you can also do a live poll, so I think. If there's any answers that you like, you can just uh, vote it up, I believe if there are any answers that you like. Bus road for a day. Um, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Like, uh, they do usually have the number of times they run in a day. COVID-9 testing. Uh, I'm not so sure. Actually, COVID-19 testing, right? I think if you are COVID-19 positive, right? I think that's one of the rare example of you do it like, um, run at any number of times meaning that you need to like, um, you will be keep on being tested until you test negative. Okay, some good examples. Yeah, okay, I'll try to vote some things out. Stair climbing is definitely one. There's a definite number of steps. Okay, all right, cool, cool. I think We'll try another one. Loops that run any number of times. So this one is indefinite. Lah. It's just like it will just keep on running and running and running. 
and just keep on running. Any examples? No, that one is good. Breathing. Oh yeah, that's I I I, I like that. Elevator music. Oh my. Oh, that's so cute. Also. Heartbeat is good as well. Try to upvote your favorite answers as well. So yeah, these are the things that, you know, you, it just like loops indefinitely, that just repeats indefinitely. Then in these kinds of cases, then what you want to do is you use a while loop. Lah. Because it just like keeps on repeating indefinitely and there's, yeah, like you don't know when the limit is. Lah. While still alive. You guys are pretty dark. Watching TikTok, oh my god, oh my god, you guys are, oh, a bit cancer, but okay. <laughs> someone down voted for TikTok, oh, oh, someone is angry, someone upvoted it again. Alright, um, I think we have some good, ex oh, okay, okay. It, it gets more contentious on TikTok. Okay. All right, before the debate gets heated up, let's go to the final example. I think we got some good examples here. Final example, a uh, final uh, question is like, what is a loop that run at most n times? A definite loop that may break, but you're not so sure when it will break. I think and the example that we mentioned earlier is like uh, looping through a string, like, you technically don't really know when it breaks, but you know for certain that it will break certain at a certain point. I feel you, bro. I feel you, relationships. Time for submit exam paper. Um, I would say that it's actually a definite loop, but yeah, I agree that sometimes you may lose time, lose track of time, and then like basically it's just like, you just keep on doing until like the time ends. Getting a degree at NUS, but maybe dropping out. Oh my god, that's so dark. You guys are so dark, eh? But yeah, very creative. Relationships. I wonder, like, if you mentioned that relationships is a loop that can run at most n times, right? What is the maximum limit of number of you trying out in a relationship? I wonder. Nice. Completing your quiz. Surviving 2020. My ICT. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> okay, I think you most of you got the point already. So you guys kind of know like when to use a for loop, when to use a while loop, depending on the type of loops that you use. Being a TA and marking assignments. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Okay, I think that's the end. I think the very last part is basically um comments in Python. I think this one is very straightforward, usually denoted by a, a hashtag at the start of a line. Can also be done between pairs of triple quotes. So example is this. Another example can also be seen in um, my notebook over here. Basically here, you can just like see and test it out yourself. Right? Okay, so yeah, uh, oops, my code share error. Okay, um, that, that's the end of today's tutorial, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, basically, comments are good habit. It's a good habit to comment in your code, especially your assignments later when it starts assignment three and onwards. Just, it, it helps you remind yourself what the code is for and help under, others understand your code. Please help me understand your code uh, when I create your assignment. And yeah, just make sure to mark out your comments properly. Otherwise, you might get an error when trying to run your program. Oh, I think I just do a little sharing. Uh. I just do a little sharing. So during practical exam two last semester, I think, was it last semester or one year ago? Uh, so s there are three questions, right? There are three questions. So this student, right? Um, Every time he moves on to the next question, he basically comments out all the his answer in the previous question. 
so that when he runs it, runs his code right, he only runs that part of the question in that Python file. And then when he submits right, he forgot he forgot to uncomment the uh, the earlier parts, because he forget to comment uncomment the earlier parts right. It's considered comment, and it is not graded. Hence he basically his assignment his practical exam is zero. Although like he actually did uh, his assignments well, and he he did his practical well. It was very GG lah. I I feel very bad. He's not. He's one of the smart students in my class. I feel really bad for him. I tried to fight for him lah, but like the greatest they cannot is commented out. We have zero idea if this is his actual answer or not. So please make sure that you comment properly. If you comment out parts of your code, of your answer, right? Make sure to uncomment it back when you submit. Okay. <clears throat> so with that, uh, we have come to the end of our tutorial. If we are sorry if we overshot by 15 minutes. Just make sure, uh, remember code share. If you want to copy your friend's code, I hope your friend doesn't mind. Code share is only live for 24 hours. So make sure that you copy it. I'll just copy this to the group chat. Uh, okay. Um, Okay, I'll uh, answer your questions then after this. So, yeah, if you want the code, just that. Um, then, okay, I guess that's the end of this week's tutorial. Um, thank you for coming. For those of you who, are, who have no more questions, who are, have understand everything, you feel free to leave. For those of you who have questions, uh, you may stay and ask questions. Uh, I'll stop recording now.